Good morning again, proud to return friends and family. So today what we have for you is reading and rap. And reading and rap, we go ahead and we read from a story and then we have a small discussion afterwards about it. Today we're reading from an open source book called Personality Theories from Freud to Frankel. And what this book is about is several different chapters that detail the various theorists that have come up with different ways that we develop and experience personality. So what we're going to be reading about today is Viktor Frankl. So without further ado, let's get started. And I apologize if you heard my birds singing. Okay, so I have the book here and I'll press it down a little more. I don't mind if my binding gets messed up. I read my books through and through and as you can see, I take some underlining notes. It's a habit I've had since high school and I probably will never get rid of it. Um, and this is some of the content I've been studying in college right now. So I think you'll enjoy it. Okay, so chapter 21. Victor Frankl. In September of 1942, a young doctor, his new bride, his mother, father, and brother were arrested in Vienna and taken to a concentration camp in Bohemia. It was events that occurred there and at three other concentration camps that led the young doctor, prisoner 119,104, to realize the significance of meaningfulness in life. One of the earliest events to drive home the point was the loss of a manuscript, his life's work, during his transfer to Auschwitz. He had sewn the manuscript into the lining of his coat, but was forced to discard it at the last minute. He spent many later nights trying to reconstruct it, first in his mind, then on slips of stolen pieces of paper. Another significant moment came while on a pre-dawn march to working on laying road tracks, railroad tracks. Another prisoner wondered out loud about the fate of their wives. The young doctor began to think about his own wife and realized that she was present within him. The salvation of man is through love and in love. I understand how a man who has nothing left in this world still may know bliss, be it only for a brief moment in the contemplation of his beloved. 1963, page 59. And throughout his ordeal, he could not help but see that, among those given a chance for survival, it was those who held on to a vision of those futures, whether it was a significant task before them or a return to their loved ones, that were most likely to survive their suffering. It would be, in fact, the meaningfulness that could be found in suffering itself that would be most impressive to him. There is also purpose in that life which is almost barren of both creation and enjoyment, and which admits of but one possibility of high moral behavior, namely, in man's attitude to his existence, an existence restricted by external forces, without suffering, and death human life cannot be complete. The young doctor was, of course, Victor Emil Frankl. Victor Frankl was born in Vienna on March 26, 1905. His father, Gabriel Frankl, was a strong, disciplined man from Morovia who worked his way from government stenographer to become the director of the Ministry of Social Service. His mother, Elsa Frankl, was more tender-hearted, a pious woman from Prague. The middle of three children, young Victor was precocious and instantly curious, and intensely curious. Even at the tender age of four, he already knew that he wanted to be a physician. In high school, Victor was actively involved in the local Young Socialist Workers Organization. His interest in people turned him towards the study of psychology. He finished his high school years with a psychoanalytic essay on the philosopher Schopenhauer, a publication in the International Journal of Psychoanalysis, and the beginning of a rather intense correspondence with the great Sigmund Freud. In 1925, a year after graduating and on his way towards his medical degree, he met Freud in person. Alfred Adler's theory was more to Frankl's liking, though, and in that year he published an article, Psychotherapy and Waltenschkog, I'm sorry I don't know German, 
in Adler's International Jour Journal of Individual Psychology. The next year, Frankel used the term logotherapy in a public lecture for the first time and began to refine his particular oops, brand of Viennese psychology. In 1928 and 1929, Frankel organized cost-free counseling centers for teenagers in Vienna and six other cities and began working in the psychiatric university clinic. In 1930, he earned his doctorate in medicine and was promoted to assistant. In the next few years, Frankel continued his training in neurology. In 1933, he was put in charge of the ward for suicidal women at the psychiatric hospital with many thousands of patients each year. In 1937, Frankel opened his own practice in neurology and psychiatry. One year later, Hitler's troops invaded Austria. He obtained a visa to the U.S. in 1939, but concerned for his elderly parents, he let it expire. In 1940, Frankel was made head of the neurological department of Rothschild Hospital, the only hospital for Jews in Vienna during the Nazi regime. He made many false diagnoses of his patients in order to circumvent the new policies regarding euthanasia of the mentally ill. It was during this period that he began his manuscript, in English, The Doctor and the Soul. Frankel married in 1942, but in September of that year, he, his wife, his mother, father, and brother were all arrested and brought to the concentration camp in Bohemia. His father died there of starvation. His mother and brother were killed in Auschwitz in 1944. His wife died at Bergen-Belsen in 1945. Only his sister Stella would survive, having managed to immigrate to Austria, Australia a short while earlier. When he was moved to Auschwitz, his manuscript for The Doctor and the Soul was discovered and destroyed. His desire to complete his work, and the hopes that he would be reunited with his wife and family someday, kept him from losing hope in what seemed otherwise a hopeless situation. After two more moves or two more camps, Frankel finally succumbed to typhoid fever. He kept himself awake by reconstructing his manuscript on stolen slips of paper. In an April 1945, Frankel's camp was liberated and he returned to Vienna, only to discover the death of his loved ones. Although nearly broken and very much alone in the world, he was given the position of the director of Vienna Neurological Polyclinic, a position he would hold for 25 years. He finally reconstructed his book and published it, earning him a teaching appointment at the University of Vienna Medical School. In only nine days, he dictated another book, which would become A Man's Search for Meaning. Before he died, it sold over 9 million copies, 5 million in the U.S. alone. During this period, he met a young operating room assistant named Eleanor Schwint, Ellie, and fell in love at first sight. Although half his age, he credited her with giving him the courage to reestablish himself in the world. They married in 1947 and had a daughter, Gabrielle, in December of that year. In 1948, Frankel received his PhD in philosophy. His dissertation, The Unconscious God, was an examination of the relation of psychology and religion. That same year, he was made associate professor of neurology and psychiatry in the University of Vienna. In 1950, he founded and became president of the Austrian Medical Society for Psychotherapy. After being promoted to full professor, he became increasingly well-known in circles outside of Vienna. His guest professorships, honorary doctorates, and awards are too many to list here, but include the Oscar Feister Prize by the American Society of Psychiatry and a nomination for the Nobel Peace Prize. Peace Prize. Frankel continued to teach at the University of Vienna until 1990, when he was 85. It should be noted that he was a vigorous mountain climber and earned his airplane's pilot license when he was 67. In 1992, friends and family members established the Victor Frankel Institute in his honor, and in 1995 he finished his autobiography, and in 1997 he published his final work, Man's Search for Ultimate Meaning, based on his doctoral dissertation. He was 32 books to his name, and they have been translated into 27 languages. Victor Emil Frankel died on September 2, 1997 of heart failure. He is survived by his wife, Eleanor, his daughter, Dr. Gabriel Frankel Vesely, 
and his children Katharina and Alexander, and his great-granddaughter Anna Victoria. His impact on psychology and psychiatry will be felt for centuries to come. So what were your big takeaways from the reading? The big takeaway that I took off initially when I first discovered Frankel was the fact that his experiences and his theories on personality stem from his experiences in the concentration camps. And so my first question to you is what meaning can there be found in suffering? Because Frankel would argue that meaning is found through suffering. And so, for example, when he was in the concentration camps, he uncovered two types of people, those that lived and those that died. And of the ones who lived were the people who had held on to their faith, their meaning, their goals, their aspirations, something, anything, hope to be reunited with their loved ones, all of those things. Those people managed to survive. And why was that? He was fixated on that. And so, we determine our reason for living, right? We determine what things get us up in the morning and what things really fulfill us, like me feeling fulfilled, being able to teach and spend my times with you. What we determine for a reason of living can be changing our attitude and our, and our thought process about something to live fuller and more rich, and rich, rich lives. <laughs> um, so then also Frankel talks about when we have the opportunity to respond to a situation. So for instance, my husband is driving down the road and there's an aggressive driver in and he's swerving around and he cuts my husband off on, in the car. And we, he could either honk on his horn, get really angry and yell at the person or and, or he could think of it as an opportunity to get away from a dangerous driver now that that driver has gone away. And so um, he can decide how he's going to respond to any situation. So Frankel responded to the having extra vegetables in his soup or extra peas in his soup by feeling gratitude. And gratitude and attitude of gratitude, as I always say, is one of the most important things to leading a fulfilling and healthy, happy life. And so another quote for you, I have two for you today. Um, the first quote is, he who has a why to live for can bear any how by Friedrich Nietzsche. And what he means by that is, as long as we have something to look forward to, we can bear, we can bear the trials, just like right now with the coronavirus, we can get through these challenges with all the new opportunities that we have, like these online courses. And the next quote I have for you is Viktor Frankl himself. Everything can be taken from a man but one thing, the last of human freedoms. To choose one's attitude in any given circumstance. To choose one's own way. So despite the situation you may find yourself in, whether it's the coronavirus, an argument with a friend, or missing out on a loved one, Try and think about how you can change your attitude to one of gratitude and focus on something different that may distract you, that will lead you to some meaning in your life while we're waiting to return to normal. And so finally, I just wanna emphasize that Viktor Frankl believes in choice. And you can choose to take care of yourself today by going outside and doing some exercise, enduring the suffering that, that comes with sore muscles to be the best you that you can be, to be healthy. Um, I hope that if you're not feeling well, that you do go outside, get some sunlight, take a shower, do some at-home exercises, do some morning stretches, which I hope you're still doing, and, and try and have a good day. Thank you, Project Return, for being with me, and have a great one.